Welcome to this video on the days of no shadows or also known as the solar zenith days. I'm Kayla Castell and I just want to give you a brief overview of this very remarkable and magical amazing thing that happens at different locations around the world. So what we're seeing here is the solar zenith uh, when the sun is directly overhead and this can only happen in certain latitudes on certain days of the year and these latitudes happen to be somewhere between 23 and a half degrees north known as the Tropic of Cancer and 23 and a half degrees south known as the Tropic of Capricorn and of course right in the center at zero degrees is the equator and that's basically the place on the planet where we're not experiencing a lot of seasonal change and not as much even in the 23 and a half degrees north or south of the equator but you can see here there's this band and this is the band uh, where the solar zenith days can take place so the solar zenith days uh, we could say uh, if you're in that band, so somewhere between Hawaii and Mexico, the Bahamas, North Africa, and the Sahara Desert, uh, part of the Middle East, southern parts of Asia, are, they're all in the northern boundary of the Tropic of Cancer. And then there's a lot of things in between. And then uh, near the southern boundary of the Tropic of Cancer, Capricorn, is Australia, Southern Africa, and South America. So these are really describing to us uh, the, the place where uh, the sun can literally be directly overhead once or twice a year. So for example, in Costa Rica, April 14th through the 18th is considered a solar zenith time where the sun will be directly overhead. And that's around 10 degrees north latitude, 9.8 if you're gonna be specific. Then um, uh, at the equator, the zenith passages occur with the equinoxes. So March 21st and September 21st, or sometimes it's on the 20th of, uh, um, of March or the 22nd of September. So it, it's around those days. And it, actually these zenith points will happen more than one day because the sun is moving into the, that alignment and moving out. But when it's at the equinoxes, it's moving very fast. So at 15 degrees north latitude, the solar zenith passages happen around August 13 and April 30, 30 um, and they're about 105 days apart uh, when, when that takes place. So if you think of the one from April 30th to August 13th, I guess it's about 105 days. Then the solar zenith happens on May 20th and July 23rd at 20 degrees north latitude, and this is one we're gonna look at more deeply when we go through um, into looking at what's happening at 20 degrees north latitude. And at 23 and a half degrees north latitude, um, the solar zenith is on June 21st, or the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. Of course, it's the opposite season in the southern hemisphere. And at 23 and a half degrees south latitude at the Tropic of Capricorn, then the zenith passage happens only on December 21st, exact. Uh, and that's their summer solstice season. Now what's interesting is that because the sun stays at its more maximum 23 and a half degree uh, declination of either north or south at the solstices about three weeks. So those solar zenith times happen for a much longer period of time than others that might just be lasting maybe a week or a couple of days, uh, depending on how quick the sun is moving at that particular season. So what we're seeing here is the temple um, Angkor Wat in Kambat, um, Cambodia, and it's thought to have been built in the 12th century. And it's considered the biggest temple in the world. And it's pretty remarkable, and it happens to be a latitude where it experiences the solar zenith. So this is how the sun shows up. It's, it's, we can see it's rising, kind of rises up the side of of one of these three pillars uh, on a solar zenith day. And then as it sets, it's gonna set down the other side, but at the solar zenith, it's directly above the center pillar. Uh, so what happens is that when the, there's a light portal and it ac activates that light portal when it's at that point, and then illuminates certain things that are, that are there and they've done a lot of research like this uh, lingam stone, this yoni stone, these are lit only on solar zenith days at these, uh, at these temple sites. Now here's another one, Kukulkan, located at Chichen Itza 
in Mexico. And what happens at the equinox is, is the serpent is lit all the way up. The serpent is lit and it's the only time that this happens. Now the ancient Maya um, and the, this region spans about 10 degrees of the tropics. Um, they recognize the zenith passages. And not only did they recognize them, but apparently communicated between the different latitudes about the difference of zenith passage dates. So they, so it's kind of like, you know, as you, it would start in the south and go towards the north, northern boundary, the furthest northern boundary. And so, earlier you know so the earlier dates and then the, and then the zenith passages would happen well what's really interesting about how it's happening at this time and this comes from john major jenkins we'll see a little bit more about what he has to say about it in a moment is that when the sun is directly overhead at, atop the pyramid of chichen itza this pyramid kuko can uh currently what's happening is that it's also conjunct with pleiades it's happening on may 20th uh, sometimes the 19th, 20th, and 21st, sometimes the 20th, 21st, and 22nd, like in those days. And basically, it's happening about 60 days after the spring equinox. And it's the only time in about a 26,000 year cycle that the Pleiades will be with the sun at the solar zenith. And the Mayans saw the Pleiades as the rattle of the snake called Za'ab. So John Major Jenkins writes about this in his book, Cosmogenesis. And this was something that really stunned him, like amazing thing that, that the Pleiades at high noon with the solar, you know, the sun at the solar zenith directly over the top of the pyramid, putting the rattle of the snake into place. And basically what this means is this is also a time when there's no shadows cast. In fact, the Mayans called it the days of no shadows. And so, uh, Although people, thousands of people go to Chichen Itza every year to watch the shadow serpent appear uh, on, the, on the pyramid, um, something that people aren't as aware of is are these uh, solar zenith days. And that uh, when he was deciphering this, he thinks that the true intention of the pyramid um, shadow serpent was when the rattle of the snake, or what they called Za'ab, T-Z-A-B, was together with the sun, putting the rattle of the snake in place directly overhead of the pyramid. So uh, there's, there was a sun symbol. This is the symbol Ahau um, in the Mayan uh, tradition. And so basically um, the, the three dot Ahau base design is the sun. The symbolism states unequivocally sun and Pleiades in the zenith. So of course this alignment doesn't occur on the equinoxes, but at Chichen Itza it occurs on May 20th in the 21st century. The point is that the pyramid points with this symbolism to an astronomical alignment that occurs in a specific processional era, meaning you know perhaps the 20, turning of an entire 26,000 year cycle. So in shamanic astrology, we look at this as a cross check on other factors that we see happening in the sky that tells us we're at the turning of a major 26,000 year cycle. And that this pyramid was built as a processional star clock. And so something that we can uh, tune into in these days. Now something else they built in Maya land were these zenith tubes. And these, this is one of the most fascinating things to me. Like if you think of a 26 foot or eight meter straight tube down into the earth, uh, and at going into a 32 foot opening, 10 meters. You know, we live. In, I live in the U.S., so I like the foot um, reference because I can connect with that a little better. But it goes into this chamber. Uh, so the only time that this chamber is lit is on the specific zenith days when the sun is um, can send a shaft of light directly down through the tube. And there's different. I just wanted to give you some different examples of how this looks like how it lights up the chamber, and that's when they would do a specific ceremony. They would know that the sun was at the zenith uh, and that they could go into these underground chambers and do specific ceremonies. It's also the time, as I said, that no shadows are cast at high noon. So here's a, a bottle, a beer bottle it looks like, that has no shadow around it anywhere because it's at that high noon zenith point day. Um, on, uh, in 2019, the sun is moving into Gemini on May 21st, 
and it is the center point of the three days with no shadows in certain latitudes around 20 degrees north, including Chichen Itza. So sometimes it happens a little sooner, sometimes a little later, because we do have 365 and a quarter days. It's not always the same day that the sun is moving into Gemini, but at 29 degrees Taurus and zero degrees Gemini, the sun is with the Pleiades because the Pleiades span, there's seven stars in that uh, asterism that span those degrees. So it's happening now. Now here's another place. This is at 19.6 degrees, one degree difference in latitude, Teotihuacan near Mexico City. And May 18th, so a couple of days earlier, because it's a little bit further south of where Chichen Itza is, is when they have their days of no shadows. And this is looking at the pyramid of the sun from the top, or from like a balloon, probably looking down. <laughs> anyway, pretty cool. I've been there. Um, some say that this site is part of a star tetrahedron on Earth that is activated during the solar zenith. Uh, so that, that was the best reference that I could find about this. And so it would, I would imagine that standing at the top of the pyramid on a solar zenith day could be a pretty powerful experience. So this was when I was at Teotihuacan in 2015. So I hope this inspired you around the solar zenith. And, and just even though you may live in a latitude where you don't get to experience it, it is something to note and to, it's telling us something very important at this time. We are at a major turning of an age. Life is rapidly evolving at this time. If you'd like to find out more, I write, have written about this extensively uh, in the Celestial Timings, available at kaylincastell.com, or you can go to celestialtimings.com if that's easier for you to remember. And of course, there's more uh, great stuff about the sky and what's happening at shamanicastrology.com. So I hope this was informative and fun and look forward to seeing you down the road.